In this video, I'm gonna give you an intuitive understanding of the Fourier transforms, which is basically one of the magic tricks that we use in math that we apply to areas like signal processing, which is used in things like music, speech recognition, and things of that nature. It's something that's very, very important, which is very sad because in classes, usually it's just taught in a very boring mathematical way, throw a bunch of imaginary numbers at you, there's a bunch of exponentials, and you have no idea what's going on, and you just take an exam and you pass, and you have no idea what just happened. So what we're gonna do in this video is we're gonna get a crystal clear understanding of what is the Fourier transform? How do we actually use it in real life application? And I'm gonna give you an, a very simple application which is noise canceling headphones and noise canceling and audio in general. So you get to get, get a really uh, deep understanding of how Fourier transforms work and how you can use it in your day to day life. Now, if you don't know who I am, my name is Ali al -Kargoli. I'm a postdoctoral fellow at the NASA Jet Propulsion Lab. In my first year at NASA, I worked on astronomy telescopes. And in my second year, I'm working on deep space communications. So in both cases, I have dealt with a lot of Fourier transforms um, so it's something I've been doing for like pretty much, I don't know, nine or 10 years. So anyway, I, I obsess over this stuff. By the end of this video, I'm, I have a feeling you're gonna be obsessed over it as well. So what I have over here is something that says time versus frequency, because this really is just the essence of what the Fourier transform does. Now the Fourier transform takes a signal in time and it converts it to a signal in frequency. But what does that even mean? And why is that even important? And before we talk about noise canceling and before we get a deeper understanding of Fourier transform, we need to use our friend over here this little keyboard to get a better understanding of signals in general. What even is a signal? And basically what I have over here is this keyboard. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna press a few buttons on it and we're gonna plot what those buttons or, or notes look like in time. And then we're gonna use the Fourier transform to analyze them. So over here on a keyboard, I have this button over here, which is this basically like a C note. Oh, this thing is not turned on. So it sounds like that. So basically whenever I press this button, all I'm doing is I'm generating a signal in time. This is the amplitude. And let's say, depending on how hard I press it, like that determines how loud it is, that determines how high the amplitude is. But I know that a C is generally at like 260 hertz. So it's oscillating where this oscillation is happening 260 times per second, or like it's like 261 point something, whatever. So we're just gonna say that C has a frequency uh, of 260. And then if I go and I play a note next next to it, like let's say this one's an E, then let's say this one's like, I don't know, um, 330, I believe, something like that. And then uh, like, let's say we go one, one over, so we have this C, we have this E, we have this G. This G is gonna be like 390, for example. Now these are basically three different frequencies, and if I were to go to and plot them, let's say this C over here is 260, the E is pretty much just gonna be a little bit faster. So let's say I plot this in yellow. So it's just gonna go a little bit faster on top of this one. And then this G is gonna be even faster. Let's say I plot it in green. And then it is like going even, even faster, okay? Now, when you add these signals together, all you're basically doing in time is you're taking a signal that looks like this plus a signal that's a little bit faster, looks like this, plus a signal that's even faster. And when I say faster, it's not that the wave is traveling faster. The sound wave actually has the same speed. It's just that it's oscillating at a faster rate. So if I add this plus this plus that, then what I end up with is a signal that looks like something like this. Now, what, what the hell does any of this mean or why does it have to do with the Fourier transform? Well, this is where the Fourier transform becomes very, very relevant. Because suppose I am playing this chord right now, or yeah, over here, see? This is basically what's being played. The three signals are getting added up in time and it looks like this. However, if you were to come and take a look at this, and I would, and I would tell you, hey, can you tell me what notes are actually playing or what frequencies or what sounds are actually playing? You're gonna be like, I have no idea. So you need to find a way to filter them out and single them out together. Now let's make things even worse. Let's say as you're playing these three notes, there's some dude who's like yelling in the background and you're adding this signal over here with another like noise signal or like some, something that looks like this. Like, I don't know, there's a screeching sound in the back or whatever. Now again, if you add these guys together, this signal is no longer gonna look like this. It's gonna look like something like... So how do you take something like this and actually understand what it even is. Well, this is where we use our good old friend, the Fourier transform. Because what the Fourier transform does is if we were to take treat this signal as some type of f of t equals to this entire total signal, then we can simply take this f of t, multiply by some exponential, j omega t, 
dt, integrate this entire thing from plus infinity to minus infinity, and this suddenly becomes our f of omega. Omega, in this case, is just 2 pi f. Now, what does this math even mean? We're going to cover that in a little bit, but basically all this is doing is it's taking this signal and it's drawing it in terms of frequency. So where this is time, all this is doing is it's breaking it down into its component, it's dissecting it, and it's telling you, hey, when, you're, when you have this signal, you have something here at 260, okay? That's your C. You have something at 330, okay? And then, you have, that's your E, and then you have your G, which is at 390, okay? But then it also knows that there's a noise component, and then it tells you there's actually a bunch of frequencies here, let's say around like, I don't know, 10, 15, and 20. And maybe they're not very loud. And then there's like a very high screeching sound here, let's say, I don't know, like 500. So the Fourier transform is able to take this jumbled up signal and break it down to its actual components. And basically what a noise canceling headphone does is simply, once you analyze these frequencies and you know what your song or sound or audio or waveform is supposed to look like, I know that I only need to have this in my system. So then I basically go ahead and I use a filter to cancel out these components that are not desirable. And by being able to do that, I, I apply this in the signal processing, I do so, some, some software, I, and, and basically I'm able to retrieve my signal back to what it looked like initially, which is just the more natural looking combined chord. This is basically the C, uh, E, and G merged together. So all the Fourier transform really, really is doing is it takes any signal, any signal in time that's oscillating in time, takes a snapshot of it, and it's able to identify the frequency components of that signal. Once we identify those frequency components, then we can go ahead and do all types of magic tricks, all types of signal processing, all types of filtering, all types of amplifying things, adding things. And you can try this. Like for example, if you go in your car, your car has something called an equalizer, which is basically like three, or, or you, might, you might see this in your car's radio, like a song is playing, and you have something called lows, highs, and mids. All you're basically doing is whenever you have a song that's playing, and let's say, I don't know, a song probably looks prettier than that, and you're using that equalizer function, all you're doing is you have a range over here that's like lows, you have a range here that's mids, you have a range here that's high, and basically this is like the, the, the array of notes. And basically if you make the high higher, like if you increase that, you're basically just increasing the amplitude of the signals in the high frequency range. If you want to increase the bass of the song, the part that's like, mm, well, no, that's actually pretty high. Like, like the very low frequency, hold on, what's the low frequency sound? Like, mm, <laughs> that's like, I guess, like a lower frequency sound. So if you want to increase that, that's like increasing these guys over here. If you want to increase the high frequency, the sound that's like, like, tss, 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 like if you have high hats or something like that, something like that's very high frequency, then you're increasing the high. And if you want to increase the vocals, then you're increasing the mids. Basically, again, all we're doing is we're just able to break down a signal in time, uh, break it down to its frequency components. And the way we do it is we do that magic trick. But now here's one last thing you need to understand about Fourier transform, is if we go ahead and simply plot these frequencies, and again, I'm just gonna go back to my like, I don't know, like three, um, 260, 330, 390 or whatever. Um, this is actually not the only thing you see when you apply Fourier transform. You end up with something that is called negative frequencies. So you get minus 260, you get minus 330, and you get minus 390, in addition to 330, 390. So what does that even mean? Why do you have negative frequencies? Well, that's where we actually need to go back and dive into the math behind what actually happens in the Fourier transform. So again, taking that function in time, integrating it, and then just generating this one in frequency. Why, why is it when we do this equation and we apply this math to this function over here that we end up with some negative components? Well, we're gonna be covering that in the next video where we're gonna dive deeper into the math of the Fourier transform. But I hope this video at least gave you an intuitive and a logical and uh, understanding of what Fourier transforms even are, what they do, what are some of their applications. If you have any questions still or something's unclear or you have any other comments, please go ahead and use them below and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace, love.